Away insieme. In get that. Insieme. The cedar is with me. This video, ironically, is going to be called Proof There is a Creator. If I asked you what was sperm, what would you say? Some would probably say a seed. Some would probably say DNA. I don't know. I don't know what it consists of exactly. So don't feel bad. But. If this was a cup of sperm. And I handed it to you and I said here. Turn this sperm. Into a living creature that has its own hair. Own eyes. Own skin. Own mind. Own blood, own veins, own bones, own heart, own organs. But also very distinct characteristics from the two parents that it came from. Mother and father. Could you do it? If I gave you 90 years to take this sperm and turn it into another being, one would go, well, science. Okay. So now you're the most experienced scientist in all of the world. And I go like this here. Since you're the most experienced scientist, this is the cup of sperm. I'm going to place it right here. Put your hands up. Like this. There's that cup of sperm. You have 90 years to do this. With your hands raised for the entire time. Never putting your hands on that sperm. Turn that sperm into a being. Give it distinct features of its own. But also features from its mother and its father. 90 years go. Keep your hands up. Could you do it? No? And that's not proof of a creator? Okay. Now, keep your hands up. Take that same cup of sperm and inside the belly of another being. With your hands up. Make it happen. There's not a creator? Well, how does it happen? Because no human put their hands on that sperm. And it did, in fact, go from a seed to a human being. In nine months? That can actually happen in less than nine months, considering there can be premature babies that are still completely developed. That's how you know there's a creator. You were once a sperm. And no human put their hands on you. And you were created in the womb. Of another being. Some of their features. And some of the features of your father. This is how you know there is a creator. Now with this being said. You. You've been chosen. Did you know. Everything that's happening in the United States of America. Also other countries, but specifically the United States of America. Everything that's happening in this country happened in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of the things that the inhabitants did. That's happening now. The only thing keeping the Most High, Tatanzambiampungu, from destroying this land there's still a few left that have to come back to him. And he's saying, No, I won't allow my anger to kindle against that land, although they're worthy of being destroyed. Because my son or my daughter will come back to me. I'll wait. Because they'll come back. 
He sent me to tell you this. He loved you. Did you know everything that you did in the past can be completely wiped away, never mentioned of you again? If you turn from all your wickedness now, you can be saved. It will never be mentioned of you. Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 21 through 24 proves this. If you turn from your wickedness and start to be righteous, none of your wickedness will happen. None of it will be mentioned of you. But if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and begins to be wicked, none of his righteousness will be mentioned of him. You've been chosen. He loves you. How do you know? We're all worthy of being destroyed right now. He just hasn't done it because he goes, My son will come back to you. My daughter will come back to me. He loves you. This is why he has not destroyed you yet. And you are worthy of being destroyed. All of us are. He loves you. And he sent me to tell you this. There is a creator. The only way to get into the kingdom. Is to be obedient to the commandments. Going to church ain't enough. The devil has a church. Knowing the Savior's name ain't enough. The devil knows the Savior's name. He sure does. The only thing that sets the Savior apart from the devil is obedience to the Most High's commandments. And in fact, Revelation 22 verse 14 says, Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have access to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. It's not too late. The boat has not departed. You can't have one foot on the land in the world and one foot on the boat waiting for departure. Because what's going to happen is as soon as that boat goes, it's going to make sure it goes and pushes. So anybody who's standing with one foot in the world and one foot in the boat, they're going to be knocked off into the world. Because Mfumu and Zambi Ampungu, the Most High, said, Because you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Don't be one who gets spit out. Don't be one who goes, well, I want to go. I want to go to paradise. But man, I love porn so much. Maybe I'll just, I'll tell them I'm sorry and then I'll just keep watching porn and then just keep telling them I'm sorry. Because pornography is not only coveting your neighbor's woman, but if you're watching pornography with the same sex as you are, it's homosexuality. That's an abomination. It's wickedness because you're seeing another man's nakedness or another woman's nakedness. Don't be one of those people that has one foot in the world and one foot in the boat. Because the word does in fact say, because you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. He says it's better for one to not know the truth at all than to come to the truth and turn back to your wickedness. Be very careful with what you do. Because there is a creator. Be very careful with what you do. May Nzambiam Pungu bless you. May he fill your heart with truth. Softening it. Breaking away the layers and the lies and the deception. As I said. The name of the savior. The devil knows it. The church. The devil has one of those. The only thing that sets these two different is obedience to the Most High's commandments. The Savior said, I'll do everything you say, Father. The enemy said, I'm not doing that. That's the only thing that distinguishes these two. If you know the Savior's name, that's not enough to save you. 
If you know the Savior's name and you go to church on Sunday, it's not enough to save you. The only way you can have access to the tree of life and enter through the gate into the city is if you keep his commandments, you are then considered blessed. Revelation 22 verse 14. If you look at the New King James Version in the NLT, the NLT says, blessed are those who wash their robes. So they're changing scripture. Be very careful. It's not too late. You can get on the boat. The Most High sent me to tell you this. Turn back. He loves you. In everything you've done in the past, that you're doing in the shadows and the darkness, that you're doing behind closed doors thinking nobody sees you, he sees you. He knows everything you're doing. He knows your thoughts. None of that will be mentioned of you if you turn from all this today and start reading scripture to find out what his wants are. You either do what he wants or you do what he wants. There's no two ways about it. If you don't do what he wants and you do what you want, that is the mindset of the enemy. The devil was told, obey my commandment. He said, no, I'm going to do what I want to do. Destruction. That's it. Earn from your wickedness. Come back. Tatan Zambia Mpungu will forgive you. May this message not fall on deaf ears. All glory, power, honor, and thanksgiving to Nzambia Mpungu. Oh, Tatan Zambia Mpungu. For your message, that it may be delivered to those who are listening. Whoever falls under the sound of my voice, may you turn from your wickedness. Because tomorrow, that boat might start going. 